Hi, my name is Steve Rahi. I am a customer engineer focusing on management technologies. Today's discussion is part 11 of an ongoing series focusing on configuration profiles in Microsoft Intune, which of course is part of Microsoft Intune Manager. The focus of today's uh, discussion is updates and the updating processes available uh, through MDF through Intune. Uh, when I first thought about titling this session, I thought about just saying Windows Update for Business, because honestly, the, the vast majority of this session is focused on Windows Update for Business. But the reality is, we also uh, support updating iOS devices, not Mac, but iOS devices, iPad OS devices, and Android. So we'll cover those two, much smaller time frame for those, just because of the nature of what they are, and we'll spend the bulk of the time in Windows Update for Business. A lot of cool stuff uh, going on there. In fact, it's a, a precursor before I get into the session. I've, I've talked about Windows Update for Business in various forums before. And Windows Update for Business, uh, when it was first introduced, was not something that I found to be compelling for most enterprises. Um, like anything, further development has happened, and that story's changed a bit. What I'm going to share with you, I find to be really exciting. Uh, there's some future looking stuff here uh, as well that I will mention. But uh, definitely, if you're wor working with configuration manager still as your software update source, take a look at what we have through Intune, through Windows Update for Business. I think you will be very pleasantly surprised at what you can do. Right? Okay, so let's get into this. The agenda that we have for today, very similar to the agenda we do for all of these sessions, what is or what are updates, and then why do we care about updates? Uh, and in terms of updates, we're going to talk about Windows, iOS, iPad OS, and Android. So we'll have this section for each one. Talk about the options uh, that are available. I think I only have that one for right now. Uh, then the requirements. Uh, show you how it works. We'll spend a lot of time on that for Windows. And then we will go through the configuration of the various update options. I will show it to you in action, at least on the uh, a couple of cases on the Windows side. And we will wrap up each section with a quick discussion of troubleshooting uh, tips and tricks. So jumping right in, what are updates? Well, updates are probably don't, don't need any definition, really, if you uh, if you spent much time in the Windows uh, updating arena at all, you know what this is, right? But basically, updates are updates to the operating system. Now, it could be that these are hotfixes, could be that they're security updates, and that certainly is true for uh, for Windows when we release updates once a month. It uh, could be uh, new OS versions, right? And that's what your experience will largely be with with iOS and, and Android OS. You know, those devices will largely bundle a lot of things into their uh, upgrades, including you know, bug fixes and security updates and different things, right? Um, so, so that's what they are. In terms of platforms that we'll discuss, I already mentioned, we will focus heavily on Windows. Uh, we will focus uh, also on iOS and iPadOS uh, and Android. Now on the Android side, what we care about there is the work profile uh, devices. So, and specifically work profile, I'll mention this again, fully managed, dedicated, and corporate owned, personally owned, not supported, but the other three uh, are, and you will see that. And then also implementation. So what I'm going to show you for Windows won't apply to iOS, and iOS won't apply to Android. Each OS has its own implementation for updates, and we will talk about that. All right. So why updates? So uh, when we talk about updates, you think about applying updates to resolve bugs, to resolve security issues, to introduce new features. Uh, to the OS to uh, include uh, usability uh, improvements, right? There's also IT management that you could lump under that, where different capabilities are added in to enhance uh, IT management. We could give lots of examples of that on the Windows side. We can give some examples of that on iOS and iPad OS and also uh, Android. On the side of IT management, why updates? When we apply updates and can reliably get those out, then it's going to really help in a consistent OS environment that's predictable, uh, streamlined, where you have a, a better bead on management, so to speak. Uh, applying the latest updates will help 
uh, add management capabilities in some cases, improve the device's stability, uh, increase the device's reliability, and, and a whole lot more. And then there's user experience type reasons why we would care about updates. For example, the latest updates often will bring with them uh, to the user those up-to-date device capabilities and experiences. And uh, instead of just leaving uh, users behind on an older, outdated OS, then uh, everyone can get have the latest. You can manage that as IT. And so blending the IT management and user experience, why do we care about that? Well, um, with the different controls we have through management, uh, those controls are going to enable a very exacting update experience, granular control for your Windows devices, update uh, installation controls for all three OSs, but, but very granular uh, for Windows. You can have some flexibility with iOS as well, and, and Android, as you will see. So there's very compelling reasons on those platforms too, to manage the update experience. Uh, one of them being that oftentimes when that comes out, you'll want time to make sure it is stable, it is delivering what you need, and you can delay uh, different mechanisms for doing so, but delay the update installing on Windows, on iOS, iPadOS, on Android, so that IT has the time to uh, to vet out the new release. Right? All this is seamless, should be, to the user if you configure properly. And so that's a, a very good reason um, as well, right? Okay. So now let's get into the specifics, and we will start with Windows. Now, as we get started talking about Windows, let's let's just upfront state, you know, as we're talking about Windows updating business and updating through into it, the target of that update is going to be Windows 10 or Windows 11. So yeah, okay, Windows 8.1 in some cases, but really Windows 10 and Windows 11. So if you are worried about managing updates to Windows 10, Windows 11, Windows Update for Business may very well be all you need and could meet your needs quite, quite nicely. If you're still needing to manage updates to Windows 7, maybe server OSs, then uh, that's a consideration where you may want to stay blended in something like Config Manager so that you have a unified single pane of glass, right? But let's just talk about the options and understand what's out there because I think you will find this pretty interesting. So let's start. So the first option is to use configuration profiles to define and to deploy your settings for, for how updates run on Windows. Now, I'm going to leave that for a while. I'm going to actually show you configuration profiles in some depth. Um, and, and discuss some details at that stage, right? And so I'll leave it for now, but just know that, that Windows Update for Business is available as a configuration profile under uh, Settings Catalog, uh, not the Templates option, but I'll show that to you in a moment. Another pathway uh, is Update Reams for Windows 10 and later. Now, this is where it kind of all started. So this policy is basically a collection of settings that allows you to configure when devices that run Windows 10 and 11 updates get those updates installed, and also the user experience when those uh, updates uh, get installed, right? The next option would be, uh, be and by the way, uh, well, I'll just, I'll say this. So the configuration profiles option will show you every single option that's available for updating with Windows Update for Business. These specific breakouts, such as the update rings, that is kind of guiding you through the experience that uh, we expect that you might need those different options for, for that kind of experience, right? So again, more on that in just a minute. But in the UI, you're going to see the bottom three uh, options kind of right there, prominently displayed as a pathway you can go down to configure what are kind of viewed as typical uh, update settings, right? So feature, the, the third one, feature updates for Windows 10 and later. So uh, here, what you're really, really doing, this policy is really simple to configure. And what you're really doing here is defining which OS version, major version, you want your devices to run. And you don't want them to run a, a version of the OS beyond that particular one. So for example, 
that you might choose uh, version 1909, just to pick one, and say, I don't want my devices to upgrade past 1909. Even though 21H2 is available, even though 21H1 is available, I'm not ready for it. And so when my device scans for any potential new feature updates, I I just want to filter that and say, you know, for you, there are none. It's 1909 or nothing, right? And that's what that really allows you to do. Uh, there are There is another setting. So if you look at configuration profile options, you'll see a setting called targeted version that will do the same thing, right? But it, it's different and uh, it, it, it implemented differently as we'll talk about. So that's what feature updates for Windows 10 and later uh, do. And it is possible, for example, to use update rings for Windows 10 and later in combination with feature updates for Windows 10 and later. Uh, not really recommended that you do that. Uh, if you're using feature updates, the recommendation is to end the use of deferrals and configure uh, feature updates to replace those settings and so on. A little bit more in depth than I want to get right now, but just wanted to uh, call that out. And then lastly, uh, quality updates for Windows 10 and later. Again, this is very simple to configure. What you're doing here is actually specifying a version of Windows that you want all of your devices to be at. And that's the version of Windows plus the, you know, whatever version of quality uh, or cumulative update that you have out there, right? It's not just major version, it's major version plus update version. And with this, and another term for, or another way that you'll see quality updates for Windows 10 and later expressed is expedited updates. And so what this is all about is helping you expedite the updates that you're deploying in your environment to be what you want them to be at a faster pace, right? And that does come at an expense, as you'll see. It can cause the user experience to be degraded as they have to take uh, quicker and unexpected reboots during business hours uh, and so on. We'll, we'll see that for console uh, in a minute. So these are all the options for Windows Update uh, deployment through NBM, through NT. And just know all of these options actually run through Windows Update for Business technology. So let's talk about that for a minute. In the next slides, you'll see Windows Update for Business a lot. You'll also see something called Windows Update for Business Deployment Services. Let's really talk about what those are. Windows Update for Business, whenever it was first introduced, I kept wondering, what, what is this thing, right? What is Windows Update for Business? Is it a cloud service? Is it something out there that, that is kind of managed and run by Microsoft as a cloud service, kind of like Azure is, kind of like Intune is, and the answer is it's not. Really, if you boil down what Windows Update for Business is, it is a collection of settings, uh, registry entries, really, MDM entries, depending which configuration pack you go to, that control how Windows Update functions on the device, right? That's all it is. It's no particular service. Now, Windows Update Deployment Service, absolutely is a service that works in conjunction with Windows Update for Business. You'll see that in the slides uh, coming up. I wanted to make sure that part at least was um, was understood. All right, so let's, let's get into this. Uh, in terms of requirements for using Windows Update for Business, there are a few. Likely you have these in place already, right? You need devices that uh, are running a supported version of Windows 10, uh, Windows 11. You need those devices to be running a supported operating system. Um, and that would be uh, the common ones that you would have in your enterprise, Windows 10 or 11 Pro, Windows 10 or 11 Enterprise, uh, Windows 10 or 11 Education, uh, Windows 10 or 11 Pro uh, Education, right? And uh, then you're fine. Then other things that you need is that device, either hybrid or pure Azure AD joined again, should have that. Uh, the device managed by Intune kind of goes without saying, but important. Appropriate level of licensing, and then you do need telemetry. So telemetry can be set a couple of different ways. The minimum telemetry setting for this to work is set it as required. You can actually configure what the telemetry settings are as a part of device restriction policy if you need to do that. Right? Okay, the next set of slides, I'm going to talk about how it works a bit, and I'm going to try to graphically illustrate this. There's several slides I'm going to walk you through here.
just trying to illustrate the concept. We're going to start here. This is a very uh, overview uh, overview graph that is trying to show how Windows updating has been done for many organizations for years, right? And that is using configuration. So with configuration manager, again, I'm leaving out a ton of details because that's really not the point. I'm just going to walk you through a couple of examples. With configuration manager, you'll have your site server. And on the site server, uh, you will have a list of updates that are available to you as an administrator. Again, processes that go into that I'm not covering, but just know there's a lot of processes that go into that. And so with those updates, you ultimately will approve which updates you want to deploy to your environment. And those approved updates will be um, basically the, the policy will be turned into policy that you send down um, to your clients. And so this connection between your on-premises uh, WSUS server, also known as the software update center, uh, will be here. And it will be a, a source for the updates that are coming into Config Manager that you've been approved. The WSUS server software update point will get its list of updates from the web, Microsoft updates. It will download those that you tell it to download so that you can deploy them, right? And then the administrator will approve whichever updates seem uh, to be needed by the environment. Once they're approved, they will be placed into a software update group and that or groups. And those groups are what's used to actually target the deployment most of the time. Don't have to, but for the vast majority of, of organizations, target the deployment out to your clients. So the policy goes out to the management point, and then the policy goes down to the clients, and then those clients will need to scan to determine, do I need these updates or not? Which updates do I need, right? And again, leaving out a lot, we can talk about when the scan cycle needs to kick in and so on. The scan will obtain a list of updates, a catalog of updates from the WSS server, bring it down, use that to scan, then we'll know the status, okay, I need this update, don't need that, you know, kind of thing. And that's kind of how it works for traditional config manager. We're not talking about traditional config manager here, but I include this as a way to compare and contrast against what we are talking about, and that's Windows Update for Business. So the first iteration of Windows Update for Business was to introduce what are called update rings, right? So, uh, it, or uh, the update rings option in the concept of update rings apply also whenever you're configuring uh, in Configuration Manager, but um, not exactly the same way. Same concept for sure, but just implemented a bit differently, right? So here we have Intune. Intune, we still have a management tool, Intune, is going, you're going to configure your update ring policy. That policy is going to be communicated down to your Windows devices. That policy is going to instruct the devices how to respond when they scan for and deploy updates, right? Now, these are Windows 10 and Windows 11 devices, so there's, there's really no need to specify uh, any of the options that, that historically you might have for like Windows 7, uh, Windows XP before that, servers where we didn't always have cumulative updates. Now, it's, it's really just one update a month, and that one update a month contains everything. I'm going to put an asterisk there, because I'm going to come back to that, explain that a little bit more in a minute, um, because of, of some detail that was shared in a video that I'm going to reference again in a minute. But that, that's the largest tree, right? So that's where Windows Update for Business, if we can implement it, is really cool, because it just takes care of itself. You set it the way you want it, and it just runs month after month after month. So the devices will get the policy, and and then the policy will tell them, hey, when, you know, when are you going to install the updates or whatever. The devices will scan directly against Microsoft updates, not against WSUS or software update point in the case of config manager, but directly against Microsoft updates and do what you need them to do as far as uh, installing uh, those particular updates, right? So that was the first iteration of it. Certainly interesting uh, to be able to do this, but uh, things have evolved a decent amount since then, right? Now, I will also point out, and you'll see this in a minute, that when you configure update rings through Intune, 
the configuration that you choose will be communicated to the device and stored on the device. That's those uh, registry keys and or MDM keys, which is what we'll see, uh, that are configured as a result, right? So it is device centric. The next piece that I'm going to show you is not device centric, right? And again, I'll spend some time going into detail about that as we show some different configurations. And that is this. Feature updates for Windows 10 and later, quality updates for Windows 10 and later, both in preview as I do this recording. Right? And this slide is a little bit busy. Right? So, so here, here's the key. You still have Intune. Intune will still deploy the update ring configuration policy to your devices, just like before. Right? So feature updates, quality updates can work in conjunction with the update rings, right? no issue. But um, there's, some, there's some nuance in that that you can, right? And so uh, we'll deploy those settings. They'll be stored on the device just like that. But then uh, with feature update for Windows 10 and later, quality updates for Windows 10 and later, neither one of those settings are stored or communicated directly to the device. Instead. Those settings are destined for Windows Update for Business deployment service. You will target the devices like normal. So it appears as if they are going to be targeted to the device. That's not true. Those settings will come over to Windows Update for Business deployment service. And that's where different configs will be earmarked for your devices, right? Those settings in Windows Update for Business deployment service will be uh, effectively but the whole point of doing that is to effectively filter what you want, right? So remember, feature updates for Windows 10 and later, quality updates for Windows 10 and later, you're defining what version of the OS you are uh, uh, greenlighting for production and uh, what version you want to be patched with the quality update, right? And so we put that detail for your devices in Windows Update for Business Deployment Service, and then when your device and then whenever your devices check in, scan against Microsoft updates, Windows Update for Business, the only updates that they will see are those updates that pass through the filter, right? And then those updates will be installed on the device. Now, all of this is explained in the excellent video that was done at Ignite by uh, one of our PMs named Aria, and she does a phenomenal job. And, and so I would encourage you looking at that, right? But I want to go through that. When I say the filter, up, when the filters are applied, those are the updates that will come back. Well, what are those filters? Well, here's an example. So when the uh, when the evaluation starts, well, first of all, there's there's a few things that when the device scans, it's going to supply to the server. One, it's going to give its device ID. It's also going to give you give the service the quality update deferral period that's configured in the OS version it's running. The revision, meaning the latest quality update applied, and then any app compatibility safeguard uh, markers that might be in place. Right? More about safeguards in just a second. Then, whenever we decide what what filtering needs to happen and what updates to present, the first question is: This a Windows update for business device? Well, yeah, it is because you're uh, scanning uh, as a result of policy being delivered from Intune and Intune Ping. Right? So if it is, we're going to apply any of the configured deferrals. So you might say, I want to defer quality updates for seven days. I want to defer feature updates for five days or whatever it is, you know, 14 days, whatever it is. And so if there's an update that just, if you apply a deferral for seven days for quality updates and a quality update released four days ago, it's immediately going to be filtered out and not presented to the device, right? Um, next one, only security quality updates or updates marked as critical quality updates will apply. No optional updates will apply. Why do I call that out? Because that can be, be read wrong, right? And I call that out because it's in the video that I, I give the link to below. And I thought about that for a minute, and I thought, you know, I, I just, I don't, that doesn't communicate well to me. And uh, I actually pinged Aria to make sure.
sure what she was attempting to say. And she she confirmed what I thought she did. And that is, you know, since for a long time, any update we release, we don't release them individually like we used to, you know, in early days of Windows 7 and prior, where each month we'd get 7, 10, 15 updates that would all be fixing different issues. Some were security, some were optional, some were uh, different categories of updates, and it was a chore for IT to decide, okay, which ones are we going to do? No, that's all gone, right? With Windows 10, Windows 11, uh, really everything these days, you get a single cumulative update, and that cumulative update includes every single thing in terms of security fixes for a given month, plus everything from the previous month, whether it be security fixes, optional updates, whatever. So just to put some numbers, if we were deploying a, a, a cumulative update in January, then that cumulative update in January would contain the security related things in January, plus every single thing from December or November or October or whatever the previous year, including all of the security fixes and the optional updates. When we then deploy the cumulative update in February, then even though no optional updates for January were included with the deployment of January security uh, updates, which is the cumulative update, when we get to February, all of it's rolled into one anyway, so you're going to get the optional updates. It just may be a, a month behind, right? So it's really don't, I think it's confusing to think about these as really different things. They're cumulative updates. And so, I, again, I put that there just to try to explain it a little bit. In reality, if you deploy the cumulative updates, you're getting everything you need, right? Um, okay. And then finally, uh, what is the targeted OS version? So if we have an update that exists for Windows 10, Windows 11, Windows 7, Server uh, 2019, whatever, it's the same kind of update, then we're going to we're gonna supply, we're going to know the targeted OS version that we have is Windows 10 or Windows 11. Or maybe there's a version for Windows 10, uh, 21H2, uh, but we're on 21H1. And so we are presenting the OS version. And so whenever we get the update selected for us and go through that filtering process, it will match the OS version that we have. And then finally, do we have any safeguard holds in place? Now, what is a safeguard? Safeguard hold is something that will identify a potential issue and block moving forward to something that may fail. Right? Typically, we think about this going from Windows 10 to Windows 11. And uh, you'll see a slide in a minute that kind of shows you the safeguard hold screen where you can see some details. I'm not going to go into it here just because it can stand its own session probably. But that is that is the last thing. Is there a safeguard hold? If so, we are going to avoid uh, presenting a certain option through the filter. But once we get through all of this, then the updates that survive will be presented to the devices when they stand and will be able to get installed. Now, this, folks, I think is cool, right? This kind of ability is really, really helpful. And um, so just, you know, FYI uh, about this, and, and some of these, this is newer, so these are in preview, but definitely take a look. This really raises the bar in terms of capabilities with Windows updates and Windows. So still under feature and quality updates, how it works, right? So whether you're using feature updates or quality updates for Windows 10 and later, you're going to pair those settings with Windows Update for Business settings, which will include uh, updates deferral, maybe seven days, compliance deadlines, so maybe for feature updates it's seven days, quality updates five days, a grace period of two days, whatever. And that is going to be your total update deployment experience, right? Okay. And then a little bit more. So I've talked about Windows Update for Business deployment service, and it's very useful, right? But it may be a new concept in your mind, but it's really not a new concept. If you think about it in Config Manager, we've been doing this for years. It's just the mechanism in Config Manager is called a software update, right? 
you as the administrator decide what updates to put into the software update group and that group of updates that's then deployed to your environment. It's just you are in the middle and you do it here. The Windows Update for Business Deployment Service does a lot of that filtering for you based on the inputs you provide, but it's really the same concept, right? Okay. And then finally, this is a screen that, that I lifted from the video that, that Aria did at Ignite um, that talks about using update compliance in Azure to look at your safeguard hold. It's really useful to be able to do that so that you understand your environment as you're moving forward. Right? So I definitely encourage you to do that. That's really all I'm going to talk about in this session because that's really all we have time for. Okay. So now, um, starting to move into the fun stuff, and that is configure. Okay, so let's let's start our discussion around configuring focused on configuration. So what I've done here is I've just, I'm not going to go through these. I just put them up here so you can see. With the configuration profile option, these are all of the settings that you can actually configure that are related to updates. Right? So what are, what are the advantages of going with the configuration profile option for uh, deciding how to configure updates? Well, a couple. First, when you go through the configuration profile, uh, you're going to see complete visibility into all of the configuration options that you can enforce in one place. Right? So present, this is kind of a double-edged sword. Because when you present all the options in one place, um, arguably with the exception of maybe the feature update things, even though there's there's something there which I'll explain, and then maybe the quality updates, expedited thing, which you'll see in a minute, but still the, the concepts are all presented. When you present all the options in one place, then that means that you will have to decide yourself which options to avoid using together with others or which options to, to use uh, in the policy versus exclude others, right? But the advantage is it does allow including and configuring the options that you need just in one place. And uh, some of the options you'll see here, again, since we do present all of them, will be similar to other places you'll see in just a minute, like updates, right? So how do we go through configuring this? For showing that, I'm going to bring in my internet console, sorry, Microsoft Endpoint Manager and Data Center. And we're going to go to devices, and then we're going to go to Windows just to focus it in. I could go on down and just look at configuration uh, profiles here, but I'm going to focus it on Windows to help filter a bit. And then I'm going to go to configuration profiles. Right? And here's my list of configuration profiles. So I have one configured already and deployed. But if I go create another one, uh, this will give me a chance to talk through one thing. Yeah, I'm going to select my button. Windows 10 and later, uh, and then I'm going to select that I want to use templates, right? Well, um, are, it, are there settings for Windows updates and templates? Well, the answer is no. There's nothing here related to updating in templates. But we do have options for updating using the settings catalog. So I'm going to create that and put in a garbage name and next, and then I'm going to add settings. And if I go all the way to the bottom, then I will see Windows Update for Business related settings, and I will wait and then add all those settings if I want to, right, just by clicking on that button. Now, again, I may not want all of these settings. I may want just a portion. It's up to you. In fact, some of these settings you don't want to probably use when you have others, but it's up to you. These are all of the available settings, right, including one down here called Target release version. Now, target release version is something that is available here, but it's not available in options such as update versions, right? So again, this shows you everything, and then other options will filter into specific things. Right? Okay, so I've already created a, a policy here. I'm kind of combining the inaction uh, screen and, and so on uh, together uh, here a bit, but. Let me, let me close out of this. And I'll show you the one that I've created. So here's my Windows Update for Business uh, policy. And if I go look at it, I, I have success, no problem. Uh, if I want to uh, look at per setting status, that's easy. I can just click on it. 
and I can see every single one of my settings that I have uh, success by how many successes in my case, I've just targeted one device, so it's just one, right? Or, and I have another screen that I can go to, or I could go look at it a little bit of a different way by viewing a report per device here, again, just one device, and show it to you here, the settings succeeded, same settings, right? And then I can go to the next page if I want uh, to view it that way. And if I scroll down, I see that it's assigned, so I've got it assigned to one group. Here are all of my configuration settings that I can edit. And so scrolling down, I just pick some different, I'm not going to go through all these settings you can, but um, some of the settings you would expect, like a deadline grace period, or uh, auto, no automatic reboot, or uh, branch readiness level, or whatever, right? All of these things uh, for the, defer the update, the update period, upgrade period. Uh, detection frequency, you know, different things. Uh, whether you want to disable dual scan, uh, that'll come up kind of in a discussion in a minute. Allow scan against Windows Update or do not allow update default policy, right? Uh, options here. All the way down, and then I have one called uh, targeted release version, all the way down, down here, right? So if I highlight over that, available in Windows 10, enables the IT administrator to assess which version they would like their devices to move to and or stay at. Well, I show you that why because that is the same exact thing as feature updates for Windows 10 and later. They're just implemented differently. So for the targeted release version, here it will actually be communicated down to the device as part of policy and be configured in the registry or the MDM settings in the case of Windows 10. It's not available in update things, as you'll see. But if you do it through feature updates for Windows 10 and later, it's going to effectively filter it at Windows Update for Business Deployment Service. So understand what your settings are and that some of them, like this, you may need to understand how they work differently based on where you implement them. And I would even suggest that if you're going to use feature updates for Windows 10 and later, that you don't use targeted release version here, or if you do use them together, make sure they agree, right? Make sure they agree. Um, okay, so I configure this. It's all good to go. And so I've already assigned this. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and close out of it. And then we can see status for this just like we would expect. All right. So if I go look at the, well, look at the properties of it here. Okay, let's do Windows Update for Business. Oh, sorry. I was looking at status right here. I did that first. So yeah, we would see it right where we expect. We can see all of uh, the targeted devices, in this case, one, have received it, no problem. Um, we can see the per settings as I showed you. Right? So that's uh, configuring the configuration profile option. Well, the next option then would be to do update rings. So update rings has some similar settings for sure, compared to what we had with configuration profiles, but not all of them. And for update rings, we had things split out to the update settings themselves and how we configure that to the user experience settings and what the user sees and what they experience as they go through and do these updates. So the advantage of using the, uh, the update rings for deploying this are a couple. So we can schedule routine and predictable rollout of quality and feature updates. Now, remember with update rings, I'm, I just have one. In practice, you're going to establish your own ring, uh, ring structure of updates where you target a certain number of machines first. Then once those are done, you target another group of machines. Then once those are done, you target another group of machines. That kind of thing as you roll updates out across your environment, starting with just a few, then expanding the audience as we go along. So I'm just going to do one. But the update ring mentality or, or approach is applicable with uh, here in Tune. It's also applicable with something uh, deployed through Config Manager if you want to, right? All of that's consistent. So managing uh, managing restarts and scheduled uh, install times and deadline settings, very doable for an update ring, so that's definitely an advantage. Uh, the settings are communicated to in, uh, or sorry, communicated to and imposed on the devices. You will see that. They are actually used by the Windows Update Agent client, right? So these do reside on the device and uh, and, and are there. 
in terms of configuring this, let's go back to our thank you puzzle. And if I go back to um, devices, Windows device, uh, back to Windows, and look at the list here, I will see when, uh, update rings for Windows 10 and later in its own little section right in front of me. Right? And so I have an update ring configured, but if I want to go create a new one, I will. And then, and then all of the predefined settings that I can choose from are right here. Do I want to allow Microsoft updates? Do I want to uh, do drivers? Uh, how do I want to do quality updates and feature updates to deferral period? Um, uh, what do I do with pre-release build? On and on, user experience, active time. Do I want to install at maintenance time? Do I want to uh, do something different for restart? Do I want to do something at a scheduled time? Right? All of those options are here. And other things that you would expect, restart checks, uh, different things. So use use deadline settings if you want to, right? All of those things are here. Uh, I've configured it basically just you know, easily because it doesn't matter. I'm not actually deploying anything right now um, that I care about, right? But if I look at this, if I look at one of these that I have configured and look at the details, I have a status here which tells me that this actually is being deployed to the device. Because if I have a device status, kind of means that the device had to receive these settings, apply these settings, and, uh, and report back that it was successful. So I have been successful here, uh, no problem. I can look at my uh, end user update status if I want to, right? So uh, what I have latest, all of the different details have here. I can look at my user update status. I didn't really target any users, but still, uh, the system account has succeeded in the deployment status. And then again, I've assigned this, which is why I'm not seeing any updates at all. I've assigned this, and uh, and we're getting back the result that we expect, right? So again, pretty pretty straightforward. Now, in addition here, I do have reports that I can use. So let's go to that for a minute. I'm going to go back to the main menu, go to devices, and then go to monitor. And if I scroll down to devices, monitor, and then per update ring status, and go down to software updates, per update ring deployment status, I will see I have one device that succeeded. So I targeted, so that's good. No failures, no errors. So you do have another level of visibility into how your devices are responding to the policy uh, that you've configured. And then um, we have even another level when we get to the device that I will show you in, uh, in just a minute. All right. So that said, let's move on to feature updates for Windows 10 and later, quality updates for Windows 10 and later. Okay, so now uh, these are pretty simple to configure. Uh, so basically just on both, if you want to get detailed device status, you need to make sure you have Windows Health Monitoring with Windows Updates selected so that you can see those details. There's some other things here that we'll talk about in the UI when we get to it. Right, so let me just pull back in the Intune console and show you configuring these options. So if I go back to the portal menu, Devices, and then Windows, and then down to uh, my Feature Update, here, right? I've got one configured, but I'm going to go create a profile. And you're going to see, here's that note about making sure you have Windows Health Monitoring enabled. And then the only options are to pick the OS version, right, all the way down to 1909 if you want to, to pick the OS version and then decide how is it going to be deployed, make available as soon as possible at a specific date or gradually roll it up. Gradually roll it out, you can uh, deal with it uh, this way. Right? So pretty, pretty simple. Now, if I go back, let me go to mine that I've got configured. So if I look at mine, you see that I'm, I've chosen 2004. I get a flag here that support is ending, but I can look at it. And if I look at the drop the menu here, I do see properties. I don't see anything relating to status here. Why? 
because this configuration is not communicated to the device. It is communicated to Windows Update for Business deployment service. What you might ask me, well, but I still want to know if this was implemented correctly. Cool. I'll show you how you can see that in just a minute. If we look at properties, then we see our typical settings. It's uh, Windows 10 2004 uh, and immediate start, and I have it assigned to a group of devices. So the devices will be factored in, and, and when the device comes in and looks in Windows Update for Business Deployment Services, there will be detail about that device that has been communicated by Intune, and the device will know what it's able to get. Right? Um, okay. Now, in terms of seeing the status, right, we do have the ability to do that, as I mentioned. You can go uh, back under uh, two places, actually, devices, and then monitor. And under monitor, you have uh, the feature update failures preview down here. Right? And so you can look at this report. And you can see no devices with errors. Here's the target version. Here's the uh, feature update profile or configuration that I have set down. Right? So I can even drill in here and see a little bit more detail. If I had anything, I don't. Right? But you can see a little bit more. So that's one place you can go just to check for any kind of errors at that level. Now, another place you can go uh, here. Another place you can go is uh, for, uh, for that, sorry, I was going to look at one thing here, I'll just change that. Uh, you can go to reports, and under reports, you can go to Windows Update here, and then there's a reports node. Here's the overview, right? And, uh, and, and so that should populate here in a little bit. It should populate in a little bit. For some reason, it hasn't. That's okay. Uh, but I do have the reports, and that's what I want to show you. So Windows Feature Update Report, similar name to what we just saw, right? And I see a graphical representation of my stats. Now, I've just targeted one device, so it's kind of boring. But the way this would work is you would choose your Feature Update Deployment, hit OK, and then choose to generate the report, which will cause it to go back and recalculate uh, based on what you saw. Uh, it'll just come back the same way, right? But it will refresh the data in a real production scenario and give you an update, updated view. Just a second, it should pop back in and show you exactly what you just saw. Right? So there it is. Okay, so that's uh, feature updates for Windows 10 and later. Now let's go look at uh, Quality updates for Windows 10 and later. So if we go there, pull back in the Intune console, and go back to devices, and go back to Windows, don't have to, but just for navigating, uh, here's quality updates for Windows 10 and later. Ah, I put the wrong one. Here's quality updates for Windows 10 and later. Right. Now, if I go through this and create a new profile, again, very, very simple to configure. Here's the call out for making sure that you have Windows Help Monitor enabled. Here's another couple of call outs. This is basically saying that we are a preview version right now. The only thing we can do right now is to expedite quality updates, but more things are coming, so pay attention here. Uh, and then this one. While, while we're expediting software updates or, uh, for the quality updates, your user experience may suffer. Why? Because if the user's behind, you're telling that device get to this level as quickly as you can and so it may impact probably will the user's uh experience with reboots and different things during the workday right it's up to you whether you decide to use it here's where you decide uh, expedite installation of quality updates if the device os is a version less than one of these right okay so in a minute i'm going to talk to you about possibly using a couple of things in conjunction in fact i'll mention it now so whenever I talked about this with a customer, one of the, the questions they asked was, well, how do we, do we have any controls uh, in this process to really ensure an SLA for delivering updates? So this particular organization has a 
very specific SLA under which they need to have their updates delivered. And so that spawned a conversation of, you know, yes, there are some controls. One of the controls may be one of the approaches, typically, that you deploy the updates with uh, an update date scenario. And then after the time has passed to allow for that uh, particular group of devices or whatever, that you follow that up with a policy here that will say, okay, if any devices were missed, they need to move ahead and move ahead at a very quick pace to catch up to where the corporate standard that standard now has moved. Right? Now, that's just one approach. Could be others, right? but that's where that conversation came in. Number of days to wait before a restart is enforced, so one day by default. And same thing, right? If I X out of this, I do not have any particular way to see a status because this is not something that is communicated to the device. It is communicated to Windows Update for Business, right? I can look at properties like I did. You can see all the configurations, nothing exciting uh, here. But then if I want to see those uh, statuses, I can go back to devices and then monitor uh, here. And then under monitor, I can go back to um, uh, Windows Update for my. Oh, wait. Down, uh, down here, Windows Expedited Update. Right? So I can go under monitor and I can look at Windows Expedited Update. So this is named Windows Expedited. The other was quality updates for Windows 10 and later. But if I click in, you will see this is my quality update profile. I have no devices with error, and this is when it was released, right? Well, and I can click into it. I, I would get more detail if I had it, but I haven't deployed it. And then, like before, I can go into reports, and I can go all the way down to um, Windows Update, which is not very far down, right here, ah, right here. And then one of the other two reports that I have is for uh, well, come on. There, one of the other reports that I have is for expedited support. The same kind of deal. I just select the profile. Should come back in just a minute. I thought I had this already generated. Okay, let's let's generate that. So I'll choose my quality update. See if I can generate a report and. Hopefully, we'll get back that one device was successful. I think I had that a minute ago. So hopefully, we'll get back the same thing. But again, you have good visibility into this, and it does, you know, it, it does provide the detail you need to understand whether everything's operating and targeted the way that you think it is. The ultimate result will be in the user's experience, too, about what they're getting presented. You know, for example, if your feature update uh, policy says don't go above 21H2, and the user is presented 21H2. But if if the feature update policy says don't go above 21H1, but the user gets presented 21H2, something's wrong somewhere, right? So you can use the user experience also as a way to troubleshoot uh, what's going on. Okay. So I kind of did configuring uh, there a little bit. The inaction part, I want to actually go onto a device and show you another level of troubleshooting you can do for each one of these. So for uh, these devices, I'm going to go into just a couple where I have these deployed. So let's start back with configuration profiles. I'm gonna pull in this virtual machine and log into it. So this one is one where I've targeted my configuration profiles, uh, co configuration profile options to the device. And if we look at the registry, then we will be able to see that those settings are in place on the device. Right? And so I'll pop open, the registry will open right up to where we need to be, should be anyway. And sure enough, so the registry key we care about is up here. So it's under policy managers where you'll find the NVM policy, current for the device and the update setting. So I'm not gonna go through every single one of these, right? but you can if you need to, to confirm that your setting is here. What I am going to do is type in target to show you that I do have a target version entry under updates, and it is set to 1909. I show you that because in the configuration profile, you have the option, I mentioned it, I showed it to you a little bit, paused on it, to select the target version. 
active figure in 1909. That gets communicated down to the client. These settings are used by the Windows Update Agent client and has the same effect as the feature update that I, I just showed, uh, showed you a second ago, this agreement, right? So use one or the other or make sure they agree. But it's here. So you know this is the configuration profile because it shows up in the list, right? So the registry of good source, you're able to validate that. Now, moving on, I want to show you the update wing. So I have another device where I deploy the update wings, and that's this one, uh, 13. So if I open the registry on it, I will see much the same thing. The same exact key. The only difference, well, not the only difference, but a notable difference, is that if I go search this, so same registry, same location, right? If I go search this for target, it is not there. If I scroll down to make sure I'm not hiding a key somewhere, there is no T anywhere in here, which means that the settings list that's here comes from update rings in this case. There is no option for targeted release version through update ring. It does populate the same registry to update with the update ring settings that you can configure, right? Again, your choice, whether you want to use configuration profiles where you see everything you can configure, or you want to use update rings that will give you more of a tailored experience for setting up your update deployments in your environment, right? So that's that device. And that's really all I can show you because I, I didn't go ahead and deploy anything for my feature updates and quality updates uh, for Windows 10 and later, but you still get the concept. There's nothing to show you on the device anyway except trying to do an update and it doesn't get the latest version. I guess I could have done that, but I didn't choose to go down that route, but hopefully it's still uh, communicated. Now, starting to wrap up the Windows discussion. In terms of troubleshooting, we talked about using the Endpoint Manager Admin Center to, uh, to understand some of the statuses that get reflected back there. We talked about using the registry. I just showed you that. We talked about using uh, the user experience as a key to whether things are working the way that they should. Now, in terms of tips and tricks, I do want to show you something, right? So the question often comes back, which do I use, Intune or Config Manager? And it, it really wasn't always straightforward, which one, right? And one of the big issues that has, was around, I forget, a couple of years ago maybe, um, was when we first introduced Windows Update for Business, this whole idea of dual scan, right? Dual scan is something that enables a device to, for some updates, scan directly against Microsoft Updates, and for others, it would scan against uh, an on-prem WSUS server or software update for the config manager. Problem with that was that whenever, you know, dual scan could get enabled in ways that were not expected IT didn't know that they were doing it. And then software updates would stop flowing from Config Manager and it would just lead to uh, lead to confusion, right? Dual scan is not a bad thing. Uh, in fact, now with what you have in Windows Update for Business, you may actually want to slate certain things to come from Windows Update for Business and certain things to come from WSUS on-prem through Config Manager, right? So I'm going to talk about that just, and I'm not going to go into any, any detail on this because, frankly, it's it's not really where we're ready to take some of this discussion with what I'm going to talk to you about, but it's still something to think through because there's really some strong advantages, right? So specifically, you know, one of the things that we talked about at Ignite, which was just recently uh, occurred at, at the time of this recording, is a new approach for driver update management. Now, I'm not here to talk to you about the details of that. It's not released yet. It's a feature that's in progress as of this recording, but it is out there. And I would suggest that you go, go take a look at the Ignite presentations for that. Really, really good stuff. Right? But in that framework, so driver management has been an issue uh, of complexity for some time. And so this new framework for driver management is intended to take away that complexity and really give you as IT the control over it. Well, you can decide as IT how you want to implement some of this through Intune. Uh, some of it may be through Config Manager, right? You may want to 
do driver management through Intune, but still maintain feature and quality updates or whatever through config management. Again, I, I don't have, it's not ready in the UI even for me to show you uh, driver management. In the Ignite sessions, uh, there's some initial work that's shown, but I'm, I'm not here to talk to you about that. But what I do want to show you kind of as a concept is how this would work. Right, so I have, I'm just using group policy as an example. You could set this up with CSPs, with Intune, whatever, but I'm just showing you the configuration here at this point. So this is Windows 11. You can get these ABM X templates for your Windows 10 devices too. I'm just going down to the, um, to the Windows update, uh, GPO settings, Windows component, Windows update, right? And Right, so we've really tried to organize these nicely. I'm going to go into manage updates uh, offered from Windows Server Update Services, and this this one for sure you need. But then down here, specify the updates that are offered. Well, all of them, when you enable it by default, come from Windows Server Update Services on prem. So maybe I want feature updates to still come from there. Maybe I want quality updates to still come from there. But Maybe I really like what I see with the driver update feature coming uh, in Intune. And so I can say, no, for this one, go get this from Windows Update Director. And then, again, not getting into the details, but the new driver management framework, it's discussed in the Ignite session, will actually put an overlay on top of Windows Update for Business deployment sections where you specify what, what drivers are actually offered to your devices. So you can then safety scan against Windows Update or Microsoft Update and get just the drivers you need. Again, that's all I'm going to say about this. But I, I, I share this just to promote the Ignite sessions because it's really good information. But also to kind of give you an idea that these are features, config manager and Intune, that are designed to work together. So like never before, you may have certain things coming out of your config manager environment and certain things coming out of your Intune environment, and they work together with no uh, no conflict. Right? A lot more can go into that discussion, but it's useful to think about. Another place that uh, is interesting as well, potentially, is third-party updates. Now, I don't have anything to show you there, uh, but there is some uh, uh, ability to do third-party updates even today in the console with the partner. Uh, you can you can get third party updates and, and deploy those through uh, through Intune. Uh, no native support right now, but like anything, stay tuned for potential developments in the future. And that's all I will say for that. Okay. With that said, we are done with Windows. So let's turn our attention to iOS, iPadOS. Now this discussion will go uh, much more quickly because uh, there's there's really not that much complexity with iOS and iPadOS but still important stuff to consider. So on the iPad iOS front, what are the requirements? Well, you do need a device that is uh, ADE, that should be ASM, I believe, not ADM, sorry about that, Apple School Manager, and Apple Configurator Enrolled Devices. So one of those three, either ADE, ASM, or Apple Configurator to enroll uh, your device, right? Um, now, Apple Configurator is probably not, not common because it is uh, more in line for things like testing. I'm just going to change this real quick, otherwise I won't forget. Um, but, but you need that. In addition, you need the device to be supervised. Well, when you enroll it through ADE and ASM, it's going to be, right? Um, with Apple Configurator, it's more of an option. But uh, as I recall, in fact, I've never enrolled one. In Apple Configurator, other than supervised, so I guess I can't say that, but I think it's just an option thing with Apple Configurator, right? Uh, okay, so both of those are required. Now, how does this actually work? So, much more simplistic diagram, you are going to have Intune deploy the policy that drives this to your iOS device or iPad OS device. Now, there's two places where you can configure policy that you'll see in just a minute. One of them is right up front in your face. It's very hard to miss. The other one, if you don't know it's there, you might skip over. Right? So let's uh, let, let's talk about it now. Oh, and then once you um, once you get the policy down, the devices will know what to go get. They'll just go up to Apple, 
which is the source for the update download, pull it down and then install that particular update. So let's go talk about configuring this. Let me pull back in the NPM console. And so we will now go back to devices. This time I will go to iPad, uh, I, no, iOS, iPad OS. And then right here in your face is the configuration option for update policies for iOS, iPad OS. I, I have one configured. If I go create one, well, I'm just going to show it to you. It's pretty simple. If I go look at the properties of this, then um, you can see my update policy settings. What I'm telling it to do is uh, select the version to install. I can choose any supported version that I want, right? Uh, and then after that, uh, I'm going to choose when to install. Update at check-in, update at a scheduled time, or update outside of a certain scheduled time. And that's really it, right, that I, uh, that I have as far as configuration functions. Now, deploying this, I do assign it uh, to a device. I haven't assigned it anything here, but I do assign it to the device as normal. And, uh, and, and that's pretty much it, right? Now, I can look at... Um, uh, look at status if I want to. I can go in, uh, like before I showed you, I can go into device and then monitor and then look at the installation failures for iOS uh, right here. And I will see kind of what's going on. I have no data, haven't deployed anything, doesn't really matter. Right? And that's one level. You specify the, the version of iOS. Uh, to deploy, and you specify when to deploy. This next option, though, is really interesting for IT. And if you're deploying iOS updates, you're trying to manage it in your environment. It's very, very helpful. So I'm going to go to devices. I'm going to go to iOS, iPadOS. I'm going to go to configuration function. So this is, uh, if I if I go to my iOS update, Configure it. Come on, I always have to make configuration for now. And I go to, to, I see my device status and all that here. So you can tell that this is a setting actually implemented on the device. If I go to properties, right? And I look at my configuration settings. I'm going to click edit. So I'm under device restrictions. So when I go create a new iOS configuration policy, I want to create a device restriction. In that device restriction, if I go down under general and I scroll down to specifically the ADE uh, deployment type, right? Apple School Manager, Apple uh, Business Manager, uh, whatever. Right? Uh, then I go all the way to the bottom and I look, defer software updates. Yes. So what this means is we're not just going to immediately make this update available on the iOS device, we might decide to hold it for a period of time to allow IT to do the required testing, make sure it's good to go. Then we will release it for those devices to upgrade to, and then they will upgrade according to the schedule that you set. Right? I can defer it from uh, 1 to 90 days, right? not 91. 91 is too long. But I can defer that. And so then I, I, I deploy this configuration profile in tandem with the uh, uh, other one for iOS updates, and I get the experience uh, that I want, right? So that's pretty simple, very powerful. And I kind of did the uh, inaction as well. Very powerful that you uh, will want to be able to, to leverage that in your environment, uh, but not hold that hard to understand. In terms of troubleshooting, again, point you back to the Microsoft uh, Endpoint or the Endpoint Manager Admin Center for status and reports and different things. In terms of tips and tricks, just make sure that you leverage that configuration profile in addition to the iOS settings to get the experience that you, uh, that you really want. Now shifting to Android. So Android, uh, again, gives you a couple of options, uh, but in one place. And even a little bit simpler, the concepts are similar to what I just described for Windows and iOS. Uh, for the requirements, you do need a work profile in the old device. 
So fully managed, dedicated, or corporate owned. This does not work for personal owned. In terms of how it works, it's exactly the same as what I just showed you for Ivan. So Endpoint Manager will deliver the policy that you configure to your Android devices. The Android devices will update against Google uh, according to what you've configured. Right? Now, let's go look at how it's configured. Again, I'm going to just advance it because I'm going to do both at the same time. Pretty simple. So if I leave this and shift over to Android now. Okay, so I'm going to go back to devices. Devices and then Android here and then configuration profile. Right. Okay, so here's my Android update configuration profile. And so I'm just going to go into properties and show it to you. Same deal, right? If I go look at my configuration setting, it's going to be a device restriction under the general tab and i want to scroll down under fully managed dedicated corporate own and at the bottom of this i'm going to have the option to post to, to configure my system upgrade it can be either device default automatic postpone or specify a given maintenance now that's it in terms of control right but the controls that are there are very useful to you as it to help uh, provide a bit of a more uh, managed experience for the way updates roll across the device. And troubleshooting tips and tricks is exactly the same as for iOS. Just make use of the Import Manager Admin Center and uh, just know the configuration profiles out there, give you time to do testing and so forth. With that said, we will wrap up this session on updates. Told you it was really going to be heavy on the Windows update part. It was a lot to cover there. Not to minimize the importance of iOS, iPadOS, and Android. I wanted to include those because they are important and for completion. But we will end here uh, and we will see.